The purpose of this lecture is to describe how you should expect to be spending your time in and out of class during this semester of general psychology. As you know, um, this particular class is taught in a hybrid format, which for us means that you're going to be in class for two hours per week on Mondays and Wednesdays, and you'll be completing course activities online for one hour per week. It's important that you realize that this one online hour takes the place of a classroom hour, and you're also going to need to complete work outside of class in addition to this hybrid hour. Um, the general expectation is that students should be spending two hours outside of class for every semester hour. Um, and so we're looking at um, a total of nine hours with two hours in class, one hybrid hour, and then six hours outside of class that uh, ends up being the same um, for all formats of this course that I teach. Here's how I see the breakdown of activities that will happen throughout the semester. Um, for the regular, the out-of-class hours that everybody spends, you're going to be reading a textbook, you're going to be taking quizzes um, on Blackboard at home, and then just the regular studying for exams and completing assignments. Uh, for the hybrid hour, what you'll be doing is generating topics that I'll end up talking about in class, um, holding online discussions of course concepts, and then um, watching some online lectures for material that I don't have time to cover in class, um, and also reading short explanations of course material. Um, the in-class hours will be primarily devoted to me lecturing and um, organizing class activities that are designed um, to help you develop the uh, important thinking skills that we value. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So let's think a little bit more deeply about the regular out-of-class hours, right? So the main things we're going to be doing, um, reading textbook, taking quizzes on Blackboard. So the textbook, as you saw the other day, um, a free textbook published by the NOVA Project. It is very, very important that you follow the instructions that I have given you on Blackboard to access the textbook exactly. Every semester, I have at least one student who doesn't follow those instructions, and they end up literally using the wrong version of the textbook. If you have any doubts whatsoever, please um, come talk to me, show me the version of the textbook that you're using, um, and I can help make sure that you've got the right one. Right, the way that you're going to know that you have the right one is my name that will appear at the bottom. Right, so if you do not see Ken Gray at the bottom of this textbook, you've got the wrong book. So let's assume that you do. Um, we will then um, have a textbook with 40 individual short chapters. Um, I really don't like to think of them as chapters because they are much, much shorter than that. So let's call them modules. All right, so you will read. Um, you will then you'll use techniques that we're going to start talking about um, very soon to help you read more effectively, more efficiently. While you're reading, pay attention to topics, to concepts that look like they're a little bit troublesome. All right, so for example, um, students often have trouble with um, systematic observation or, or empirical methods. You know, even after even after looking at the definition and reading the section, it's it's still can, it's still gonna be a challenge. Make a mental note of that. Make a physical note of that. All right. Keep reading, and then when you finish. Oh, and by the way for this first quiz, you'll finish Why Science, History of Psychology,
and research designs. So all three of those modules before you go to Blackboard uh, to take the first quiz. So. At Blackboard, you find your section. Everything that you will need um, can be accessed from this margin on the left. And so you see uh, I've highlighted um, or put a little pointer um, at for the at-home quizzes. So we'll go there. Nova Quiz 1, again, it reminds you which three modules you need to have read before you take this quiz. Right. And then once you start it, it gives you all the information. Test can be saved and resumed later. Allows multiple attempts. Tells you when it's due at the time. And then begin. So let me just answer some more answer randomly. I'm not even reading here. Test submission confirmation, click cancel to return or click OK to submit. You'll submit and then notice here where it says click OK to review results. So we've got to click OK. And it will show us how we did. Tell me what I said, tell you whether it's right or wrong. Right, so just by sheer luck, I got a few right. So now you've got two pieces of information. Um, difficulties that you might have had during reading and difficulties that you might have discovered when you took the quiz and got some questions wrong. Keep in mind that you do have the opportunity to take each quiz five times for a grade. And then even after that, um, I will be encouraging you to take the quizzes um, even more than that uh, for practice. But that's something that we'll talk about in class uh, soon. After you've taken the quiz, after you've made note of the concepts that gave you difficulty while reading and while taking the quizzes, um, now you're going to get to um, one of the main activities for your hybrid activities. You're going to tell me what gave you trouble. For that, you go to the discussion board. When you get there, you'll see that there are individual conversation forums for each quiz. So for quiz one, what gave you trouble? Go in there, create a new thread, and for your subject, put the concept that's giving you difficulty. So in this case, psychophysics. And then if you want to put a little message that uh, indicates what the specific difficulty is, I didn't understand this concept. I think a real life example would really help. It gets posted. So now other students can come along they can see it. So if they also have trouble, maybe they could they could reply, they could 
um, you know, put a another listing of it, or you can also just rate it. Um, you click on that and those stars will fill up. Um, I will be using both, how many times something gets listed and what kinds of ratings it gets to help me prioritize what I'm gonna end up covering in class. So I'll be collecting all that information and then putting that into a Google Doc that has a shortened outline of the topics from the textbook. In this case, right, only the topics that students told me that they had difficulty understanding. That will be the main material that I lecture on. In some cases, or maybe there'll be a, something like empirical methods from Y Science that's actually pretty short and pretty easy for me to explain. Um, so for that, maybe I would just reply to the discussion board and give my explanation there. Um, others I will be lecturing on in class, right? So for psychophysics, for example, um, I'll give you a little, you know, five, 10 minute explanation in class. And then finally, um, when I run out of time in class, I will record additional lectures like this one that provide those explanations for the rest of those concepts. Um, I'll always try to keep these lectures at 20 minutes or less, so you don't have to commit to uh, you know, listening to a long lecture when you might only need a couple of concepts here and there. Um, but um, that is the basic principle. At this point, I think I've given you enough information to get started on things, particularly uh, the way you'll spend time for the hybrid hour. Um, however, if it turns out that you need more explanation, um, as always, please feel free to ask either in class um, or by email. See you soon.